Hi everybody, Mike McConville here one more time, String Tech Workstation, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. I have this Simon & Patrick guitar that I'm doing a neck reset. Now, I have a video I posted years ago that kind of shows this job. But I, a couple of things I wanted to point out, things that you need to keep in mind when you are doing a neck reset on this type of guitar. When a guitar comes in for a neck reset, typically, I allow at the tip of the heel, just a little less than a millimeter distance from the tape to the outside of the wood there. This is where the taper starts. So this is removed and we go from here down to zero on the underside of the fingerboard extension. And that allows us to kind of to tilt that neck back and regain, you know, the 20 or 30 or 40 years of a string torque and be able to set up the action and have a healthy saddle height. Well, back in the mid-60s when I started kind of tinkering around with the guitars and got into the guitar game, the bolt-on neck was kind of a rare thing. Uh, uh, the early Framus guitars, you know, had the bolt-on necks. And, of course, in North America, Robert Godin kind of spearheaded that whole movement long before Taylor and Collings and all these other guys jumped on board. Of course, even Martin now make a bolt-on neck. This is the Simon Patrick style. We've got two bolts like this, the inserts in the face of the heel. A pretty simple design. This is how I set up to do this job. You've seen it before uh, on the tech deck. I bring that heel tip we're working on right up to sort of chest level. Yeah, so this is the little sort of 110 degree die grinder that I use for a multitude of things. I have this little twist on sanding disc. In this case, it's a hundred grit. It just kind of twists onto there. And that allows me to kind of do this job literally in a few seconds. Okay, set your stopwatch. The rest is done by hand. Okay, you can see that I've just about kissed that masking tape, a little shy of a millimeter. Now I'm going to put it on the guitar and we'll just check that neck to body angle. So you can see that it's actually straight from the underside of the fingerboard to where I took it off. I kind of leveled that off. Let me show you what I use for that. And this is one of those instances where I keep saying I'm big on the vernacular. This is a tongue depressor, two-sided tape. I did square it off on the ends and the sides. I've got 180 grit on this one, but I started with this 120 grit. With the 120 grit, I kind of took it down to the line and then switched over to the 180 sticks and just smoothed it out and then just straightened up from this point to the underside of the fingerboard without actually taking anything off on this end. What we're doing here is tilting the neck back so that we end up with a nice healthy saddle height at the bridge. This will also increase the volume of the guitar pretty dramatically. The higher you come off that soundboard with the uh, focal point of the saddle, the more downward pressure you put on it. That's why one of the first responses I get from customers after doing a neck reset is, why is the guitar so loud? That's why. Okay, next. All well, that next set came out perfectly. So now we don't have that sort of ski jump at the top end anymore. It's leveled right out. And when I slide that straight edge along the fingerboard, there's about a millimeter gap between the rosewood surface and the underside of the straight edge. Normally, I try and get it so it just kisses, but this bridge was actually shaved down. So that's not, not the normal thickness, as you can see, for a regular dreadnought bridge. If it was normal thickness, then that straight edge would just kiss the rosewood on both sides. So we got our neck angle perfect. We'll glue that fingerboard extension very gently snug down those bolts. I'm using a ratchet to tighten those bolts. A three-year-old could strip those bolts so be very cautious about that. Tighten them up just enough so that the washers are not rattling. That's it. So you have to take into account the six different angles that you need to sort of keep in mind to get this perfect. It's right this way and this way, or the strings will run off the edge of the neck. It was like this, so this way and this way we've corrected. This is now perfect, that's why we took the neck off. And lastly, it's not as, as much of a concern with this type of neck joint, but when you're doing a real dovetail, you've got to watch that you don't tilt up this way or tilt this way. 
So there's a lot of considerations in this neck to body angle to get it right. This one's primo, 100%. Don showed up at my shop like four years ago. We basically eked out whatever we could and I warned him, I said next time we're going to be doing a neck reset. So he's back four years later and we're doing a neck reset. Ahead of the bridge pinholes we needed to channel that to get enough tension at the focal point on the uh, saddle. Well wait till you see the new saddle in there. That's not going to be an issue anymore. There'll be plenty of downward pressure and he can expect at least a 30% increase in volume.